Well, the Indonesian government is planning to build a center to develop Papua youth creativity, which will be called the Papua Youth Creative Hub in Jayapura, Papua. The development of the Papua Youth Creative Hub is planned to take place between September 2021 up until December 2022 and will be funded by using the state budget with a total development cost of around 98 billion rupiah. Now, previously on Saturday, October the 2nd, 2021, President Joko Widodo officially initiated the groundbreaking ceremony and laid the first brick to start the work on the building and development of the Papua Youth Creative Hub. Now, the president is hoping that the Papua Youth Creative Hub can become a driving force and source of inspiration to boost the potential and train the many young talents in Papua. In addition, the hub can also become a center for Papua's creative young talents to strengthen the innovation ecosystem and develop beneficial technologies. Di sini nanti akan diurus mengenai entrepreneurship, mengenai petani-petani milenial yang akan dimunculkan, kemudian yang berkaitan dengan membangun ekosistem digital, kemudian riset dan inovasinya juga dikembangkan. Saya kira inilah masa depan kita semuanya, masa depan Indonesia, masa depan tanah Papua. Ada di Papua Youth Creative Hub yang kita harapkan nanti di akhir 2022 sudah sel sudah selesai. And to discuss more about Papua Youth Creative Hub, we will talk with the special staff to Indonesia's president, Billy Mambrasar. Hello, Billy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, Billy. So as we heard just now, President Joko Widodo said that the the Youth Creative Hub will help develop entrepreneurship, develop young talents in Papua. But explain to us more specifically what kind of facilities will be offered at the Papua Youth Creative Hub, will there be weekly training programs, and how can youth in Papua join later when it is built? Is it open to everyone? Just tell us everything. Thank you very much. So it was initiated by uh, our meeting, like around 22 young people with the president in the palace around uh, uh, end of 2019. At the time, uh, then we heard that, you know, we can have also a hub that create great startup from Papua. So then the startup and small medium enterprises are not just from the, um, the central part of Indonesia, but also can come from, from, uh, from the eastern part of the country. So the president agreed and asked what, what should we do? And we agreed on, um, you know, initiated and, and, uh, by the young people to help, help this hub uh, called Papua Creativity Hub. Uh, and it's under under an ecosystem called Papua Muda Inspirative, an ecosystem consists of uh, the small medium enterprises and startup uh, uh, activists of the Papuan uh, youth. So the facility that is planned is uh, is going to be around seven thousand and two hundred eighty eight uh, square meters, uh, consists of the main building. Uh, uh, that that will be you know built uh, separated into a, a couple of parts. That is co-working space for the young people to talk and discuss about what 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 would they do uh, as a startup. Uh, we, we we will also have a facility for them to learn about the digital and internet technology. Another space for learning about the handicraft, the small medium enterprises. Uh, and another training facilities like language and and, and, and so on. Um, we we will also have a dormitory because you know Papua is very big and consists of people in the rural areas as well, not just in big cities like Jayapura. But we will, we, we also want to um, tap into those out there in the villages. So the reason we have a dormitory is that for the young people in the villages, they will come and stay in the dormitory for three to six months, learn about how to start, start a business and small medium enterprise and so on, get the funding for their capital and then go back to the villages to have the, um, the uh, to, to do the business there. So pretty much that's it, yeah. Right, um, but to actually, I mean, this all sounds very great. It's basically to boost the economy in the Eastern region and in Papua as well. But to join this creative youth hub, I mean, what is the process like? Can anyone join? Or will it work together with certain businesses or, or, or schools? Exactly. Anyone 
uh, with the category under the youth, you know, young age youth, uh, and reside in Papua, uh, can join really. You have to just register yourself to an ecosystem called Papua Muda Inspirative, as you can see it from uh, in, in my background. Uh, you know, we have website, we have Instagram. You can, you know, just go there, register, put your name, tell what business that you're currently doing and what you want to start. Then, you know, you can be part of us. So anyone, pretty much, young people reside in Papua and Papua Barat can join. It's, it's right, so it's open to everyone just to boost the economy and development over there, over in Papua. Now, um, um, previously you were mentioning that one of the focuses of this creative hub is to develop startups and to boost the digital economy. Now, if I'm not wrong, there is a target of creating over 100 startups in Papua. Can you tell us more about this, about the target to make startups in Papua? What kind of startups are we talking about? Yeah, so uh, Indonesia is one of the countries with the biggest numbers of startups based on the Bain, uh, and comp uh, Bain and companies. Uh, Indonesia is like among the top. And uh, if you take a look at the unicorns from the 12 unicorns in Southeast Asia, five are from Indonesia, like Lazada, Gojek, Grab, and so, uh, Lazada, Gojek, and, and so on. However, there is none from Eastern Indonesia, especially from Papua. So the Papua Youth Creative, Creative Hub is, is built to then help the youth from Eastern Indonesia, not only just Papua, probably from Maluku and from Nusa Tigari, if you want to come and learn how to make startup. Its presence can then reach you with the help and assistance, uh, which is impossible for you to get now. You know, most of the trainings, most of the fundings are available in Java and in, 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 in the western part of Indonesia, not in Eastern, Eastern Indonesia. Uh, so we want to kind of bridge the gap. We want to, you know, uh, create more and more uh, startups from Eastern Indonesia, especially from Papua. Um, and the hundred, the numbers of hundreds consist of not, not just digital startups, but it could also be small, medium enterprises. It could be also social initiatives, like if you want to help education, health, and you want to use technology, digital or, or make a, a creating a business way that you can join this, or even agriculture, like agriculture and history. As you know, the agriculture is like a, a sector that absorbs most of the youth right now, like almost uh, about 60% of the youth works in the sector. So we want to, you know, by the movement from this hub, we want to help them to do the agriculture by using technology and learn about entrepreneurship so that they can do it better and they can increase the wealth. Uh, you know, of, the, of being a part of this instance. So pretty much the numbers, the hundred that you mentioned is not just technology like startup, digital startup, but consists of anything to do uh, uh, on their own, on the choice, but they, they, they will learn about entrepreneurship and technology to them, you know, enrich what they do. Right. So the focus here is not just startups, but also on technology and the digital economy, uh, digitalizing, uh, small to medium-sized businesses, but in all of that, in preparing the development of this digital economy, of course, you need trained workforce, a tr you know, a trained, uh, a trained work pool, and infrastructure as well, digital infrastructure. Now, right now, how is the talent pool and digital infrastructure in Papua? Are they ready to go to this next step, or how is it right now? There's a very good question. Uh, there's a very good question. Yeah, yeah. When when people talk about Papua, then the image of Papua being left behind, lack of human resources and, and stuff is like stuff that appears on the minds. But if I mention to you the numbers of the youth right now, because of the spatial autonomy that was given since 2001, and with the funding from the spatial autonomy, around 30 percent is used as scholarship to send the youth, the youth to go and study, even in overseas, and also including domestics like myself. I got a special economy scholarship to study overseas as well. Um, right now, uh, if we model the numbers of all the scholarship programs um, and uh, count the numbers of the youth that, that have accepted the scholarship and even being a professional work in different sectors, uh, it's around 60, sorry, 96,000. 96,000 of Papua New Year who, we, uh, who are doing 
you know, great jobs in different sectors. And most of them are from millennials and Gen Z. However, there is no link between them with the government needs. Like basically the government doesn't have data of how many, who they are and what they, what they do and where they are. So uh, 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 the Creative Hub is currently building a, a thing called Papua Talent Management, or Management Talenta Papua, as part of the National uh, uh, Talent Management or Management Talenta National, which is launched by the President Joko Widodo uh, a couple of months ago. And this uh, talent pool then will be the ecosystem to fill the Papua New Year's and also we encourage and give them um, facilities and access to then help the local government to do the development process. So always, uh, every time I'm explaining this uh, Papua and Talent Management pool, I feel very optimistic about this. And as you can listen from the president's speech in the phone opening, Fukano uh, Olaraga National Openings recently, that he's, he said that he's very optimistic for Papua and Papua Barat development will be accelerated because of the presence of this great, great Papua New Year who is doing great job uh, uh, all around the country and even overseas. All right, Billy. Now, um, just, just very quickly, because we are kind of running out of time, you were mentioning scholarships just now. So does this Creative Youth Hub, will there be any kind of scholarship program, you know, um, kind of affiliated with it as well? Or how does it work? Yeah, because we, we will work with the government, uh, we'll be the partner of the government. So any program from the government, including scholarships, also uh, seed capital, uh, you know, funding for the small medium enterprises will be available for the youth to join uh, and, you know, be part of that system, of course. And we're currently in the, in the talks with the different ministries to provide those kind of facilities, like including scholarships. All right. So certainly there seems to be a lot of positivities here in boosting the future of Papua and also Indonesia. Startups in Papua, digital economy, the talent pool in Papua, it all seems to be great. It's going to be completed in 2022. So we hope for the best. And thank you so much, Billy, for giving us insights on this new project.